What's up guys, it's Mr. Jamvet and welcome to the Academy, your best resource for competitive Pokemon. In today's video, I'm going to be naming the top 10 Pokemon in Smogon OU right now. This list is based on how effective each Pokemon is likely to be in each game, as well as the general tier. Usage was taken into account, but was not a heavy deciding factor. That being said, grab your popcorn and let's get this party started. Kicking off this list is Mega Tentacruel himself, Toxapex. Yup, everyone's favorite wall barely made the cut. Bitch, I'm in the cut. Roll them see. I can already see your face getting red, remembering all those times you were walled to death by Toxapex, being stalled by Toxic, and just thinking, I'm gonna dislike this video, gonna click off, gonna unsubscribe, because Jam is spewing blasphemy right now. But hear me out. Toxapex as a standalone Pokemon is not as impenetrable as it once was. This DLC introduced a lot of heavy hitters, many of which are Ground, Electric, and Psychic. It also struggles with its move slot seeing as it pretty much always has to have Recover, a statusing move, Scald, Haze, you get where I'm going with this. It doesn't have a lot of wiggle room for its move sets, but it needs a lot of different moves to function. With all the setup and raw power, not to mention the rise of Future Sight, Pex is no longer this big, unbreakable, immovable wall. All that said though, it's still a Pokemon every team should consider. If it's paired with the right partner Pokemon, it can make for an insanely, insanely solid defensive core, and so do not sleep on my man Pex. Number nine, Tapu Fini. This one was a pleasant surprise, mainly because in the previous generation, it was the worst Tapu. How things change. With the addition of a seemingly inconsequential move called Draining Kiss, Tapu Fini has now become a Pokemon you have to seriously consider when you're creating a team. Its Combine Draining Kiss set can quickly turn the tide of a battle, mainly because there are only a few Pokemon in the tier that can outspeed it and one-hit KO it at that point. That coupled with being immune to status is a recipe for disaster. That said, it's still crippled by low speed and it's fairly weak until it starts getting its boost going. Either way, Tapu Fini, number nine, something you should prepare for. Number eight, Spectrier. This dark horse, or I guess more technically ghost horse for all you Pokemon typing Nazis out there, is an interesting one. On paper, one would assume Due to its lack of coverage, it wouldn't be too difficult to deal with, but that's far from the case. Ghost is one of the top offensive typings, being halted by only dark and normal types. Fortunately for the steed, there are virtually no normal types in OU barring Blissey, and it can be even that, and only one dark type in the OU tier has access to reliable recovery in Mandibuzz with Roost, and it can be even that with Will-O-Wisp, Nasty Plot, Calm Mind variants. On top of that, it's fast and has an amazing ability that boosts its special attack after every kill. All that being said though, because it's so one dimensional, players usually know what to expect early on and can play accordingly even if they don't know the exact set. Even with that though, it's still a top tier threat. Number 7, Rillaboom. King Kong is back. Rillaboom is probably the most interesting as far as its rise to fame. From being as low as are you before the DLC to becoming that thing that hides underneath your bed. This ape has no plans of slowing down either. Due to its amazing move pool, there are only a handful of Pokemon that can comfortably switch in on it. If you're not one of those dedicated counters, then you could easily find yourself getting picked apart by surprisingly strong Grassy Glide even if you resist it. Unfortunately though, the introduction of so many new flying types in the Crown Tundra caused its effectiveness to drop. That said though, it's still one of the top mines you need to watch out for. Number 6, Heatran. The uh, uh, thing is back. Heatran, the core crusher, has returned and is playing no games. Even though not as lethal due to the removal of Zebus, Heatran is still a major glue to many common teams. Prior to the Crown Tundra, many players struggled breaking Clefable Toxapex. They piled on cores, but that has become a thing of the past with this. Um, can someone please tell me what Heatran is? It can also act as an amazing offensive threat on Sun teams 
now that it can run eruption with any set. Sadly, as always, Tran struggles with water, ground, and fighting types, which are very common in the tier. And with the introduction of the new moves, many Pokemon who it used to handle comfortably can now do a little bit of work to it, so it's not as solid as it once was. That said though, Heatran is definitely something you need to have on your team. Number 5, Landorus. What? Mr. Number 1 in usage is only number 5 on this list? Yup. This is another Pokemon that was heavily hit by the removal of Z-Moves. A big thing used to be trying to figure out what set Landorus was carrying. It could be Choice Scarf, it could run Swords Dance, Z-Move with the Rockium Z or with the Flyium Z. And if you guessed incorrectly, that may mean destruction. Now, Landorus is a lot less threatening and a lot easier to get through. It has very good sets that can be abused, such as Swords Dance, but currently the metagame hasn't caught on. But I think this is going to be a thing of time. It's still one of the most consistent Pokemon around, and is definitely going to see brighter days as the metagame evolves. Landorus needs to be on your team. Number 4, Clefable. The pink thing is back and in your face, though less so than before. It should come as no surprise that Clefable is high on this list because throughout generation 8 it has dominated the usage stats. I had to slow down for that one. And if it wasn't for Shifu, I'm not even sure if it would be as high in usage as it is now. However, Clefable is still an amazing, amazing Pokemon because it has incredible ability, incredible moveset, and can support a team like no other. Because of the introduction of many strong offensive Pokemon, Clefable can't just sit and wall things like she once did. That said though, it still has the unique ability to surprise any team and completely disrupt the game. So don't sleep on it. Or do, since it looks kind of comfortable. Number 3, Magearna. Stop looking at those hips, man. Don't don't try to play it off. I'm on tonight, you know my hips don't lie, and I'm starting to feel it's right. All the attraction. I saw you. I'm sure everyone here has played the game of guess what that set is, only to get it wrong and end up getting swept. For many, Magearna would be their number one on this list, and that's understandable. It was banned in the Isle of Armor due to there not being a lot of offensive counterplay. However, there are now a plethora of fire and ground types that have flooded the OU tier, making it very difficult for Magearna to just easily run away with games like it once did. That said, it's still very dangerous. It has access to damn near every move in the game, every typing in the game, and is almost uncounterable with the addition of Trick because it can completely shut down what was once your answer to it. Not to mention again that it has the special attack boosting ability so it just gets free boosts for no reason. It also performs well defensively and so I don't think this needs to be said. Mag is not something you should sleep on or sleep with. Number 2 Cinderace of all the bunnies, there can only be one king. And that's Cinderace. Cinderace is so interesting because it's not necessarily the strongest or the fastest or even the most versatile. In fact, its moveset is fairly predictable, but that's where the danger lies. With its ability, every move it goes for is a stab move, and that's a big deal, especially when a lot of its moves are base 120 and up. It is the one Pokemon that has no dedicated counter and it can learn moves and run sets that can muscle past just about any OU check. When it comes in, you have no choice but to react and if it uses a move that damages your answer, it's over from there. Unfortunately, or fortunately if you're staring down the Cinderace, many of its good moves if not all of them are inaccurate, which is a big deal. It's still also slower than a lot of common threats. And so to get any real power out of Cinderace, a lot of times it's forced to use an adamant nature and then compensate with the use of Sucker Punch, which is you know, not the best way to go about things. All in all though, Cinderace is arguably the hardest Pokemon to counter in OU. Drum roll please. Number one. Do I even need to say his name? Mr. I'm getting suspected himself, or Shifu. 
If you don't have a buzzwall or a clefable, I think you know what happens next. Urshifu is probably the most dangerous Pokemon in the tier. It forces certain reactions from opponents because if they don't do it, they lose a Pokemon. And with it being paired with the ever so common Future Sight, it becomes an even greater problem because it allows it to know exactly what Pokemon you have to go to to deal with both Future Sight and whatever move it just decides that it's gonna clobber you with. Luckily, its speed tier isn't amazing and it's manageable. So if you have something that's faster and hits heavily on the special side, you can generally take it out before it takes you out. The biggest reason it's number one on this list is its general impact on the metagame. Most if not all of the Pokemon I mentioned before have several answers, whereas with Urshifu, you pretty much have to be a Clefable or a Buzzwole and many people don't want to use a buzzwall for a variety of reasons but post Curum and Zygarde it's not as great as it once was and so if that's what's required or you have to combine a Toxapex and a Mandibuzz and Prey I think that's a little restrictive and is just a testament to the effect that this big bad dog has on the meta and that concludes today's top 10 guys Leave your comments down below on what you agreed with, what you disagreed with, what are your experiences. Hit the like button secondly, and also subscribe if you're not already. Greatest competitive Pokemon content you will find anywhere. Lastly, I'd like to shout out my guy, LOL No Pound. He is the comedic visual genius behind all this. I write the script, but it couldn't come to life without his vision. So definitely check him out. His link will be in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one, depending on how many likes this gets. Kidding. No, I'm not. Peace.